there is a list of games. If you decide that maybe, hey everybody, Michael Crump back here again, and today we are going to install PKGI for the PlayStation 3. So scroll down here and click on this button that says download. Once you're on the download, and this may change as time goes by, but you're going to want to download that PKG file. Now, there's a whole lot of instructions in this, and for the most part, most of these have been pretty confusing, at least as I have originally looked at this and started trying to figure out where do I place this config.txt file, how do I build one, etc. The first thing that I would suggest is that going back in and making sure that you have installed pkgi-ps3.pkg into your USB drive underneath packages because we're going to need to install those onto our actual machine. Now, there's a couple of setup instructions here for what exactly those files. So as a best practice, I'm going to use that directory that they provided here. And we're going to come in and we're going to just create that name. We'll go ahead and create another folder with USR DR. And then inside of this, we're going to create two files and these two files is going to be all that you're absolutely going to need in order to get PKGI working on your PlayStation 3. So the first file, we're going to actually name this one config.txt. Yes, I made a mistake there. Just make sure you name that config.txt. And here's what the contents of that's going to be like. I have a GitHub link below that actually has all of this text, so you do not have to uh, type this up yourself. You can just simply copy and paste it out of the link that I have provided below. So here, what I've done is I've went ahead and I've created a DB um, format. So let's go again, file, and let's go text, and this is just going to be called dbformat.txt. Okay, so we've got two files here. Again, there should be a config.txt and a dbformat.txt. Okay, so we're switching over to our PlayStation 3 now, and we're just going to go in and we're going to install that pkgi.ps3.package. Um, now let's go ahead and let's go into Multiman. So Multiman is another one you should download and install it. Um, and we're going to go into our dev USB and we're just navigating out to these two files. So let's take both of these files. We're going to copy them. And now we need to navigate back over to the directory that that is located in on the hard drive. And that's going to be right here in HDD0. We're going to follow the instructions of going to game. And then this directory back in USR DRR. And now we're just going to paste those back in. So it's going to ask us, are we sure? Yes, we're absolutely sure. And as you can see, if you didn't do that, now's an additional time to change that to config.txt. So you can just rename it right here within Multiman. Okay, so that is what we have, and that should get us where we're looking to go. So let's go to Network, and then PKGI, and then PS3. So when this first launches, it may look a little bit scary, but in reality it's not. Uh, just go down to the button there that says Refresh, and after you hit Refresh, takes it a second or two it refreshes all of the databases okay now before we actually uh, jump in and start using this we need to create an account so I just went over to the Sony website here and it's gonna say okay enter like date of birth um, here for the most part I'm just making up one I would make one that's definitely not a minor though 
as if you are a miner, there is a bunch of additional uh, security steps that you have to go through. Keep in mind, the reason for this is, is that this is just going to be to activate the console, which will allow us in turn to use these games that we download. Again, I'm going to fill out uh, some of this information. I will keep most of this blurred, uh, but in this instance, I'm just filling out um, a user or a user ID and then as well as like a password. Okay, and you have to do a bit of a verification there, so I'll go ahead and fill this in. And we need to select our country or region. So a city, state, zip, or depending on where you live, uh, the proper prompts that you need there. Okay, online ID and name. This is uh, your name that they will be sending information from. You wanna probably opt out of both of these things. And then you should have an account created. Make sure you write down the username and the password for that. And again, you want to opt out of any of Sony's personalized content, etc., from their site. I would go ahead right now at this stage and verify your email address. So in this instance, it was on my phone. So I went to the address or I went to my email and then I clicked the verification link because I wanted to go ahead and get this done and get this out of the way just so it doesn't come back to haunt us a little bit later on. And if you see that little smiley face up at the top, that means you are logged in and that that account you can use. So going back to your PlayStation 3 uh, console, I always think it's a good point to uh, make sure you are logged in with the account that you want to use and then go up to the very top here and go to sign up and you're going to use an existing account and this is where you'll just go ahead and you'll fill all that in. Okay, so now it says thank you in your name and you should be in there. Um, I did put a check on the save password, but I would not recommend um, auto logging in each time. Um, sometimes I go ahead and just go and download the PlayStation Store. Uh, sometimes it will bother you if you don't. So just go ahead and log in there and you should be good to go. Okay, and here again for the PlayStation Store, there was yet another update. So I had to go ahead and grab that one and I did that and it looks like uh, it is installing Perfectly. Okay. I would go ahead and reboot now. Obviously, if you're not using custom firmware like I was, uh, then you could just uh, simply reboot it your normal methods. Okay, so now you're going to take that PlayStation account that you just created, and you're going to sign in to the PlayStation Network. Once that signed in, go to Account Management. Go to System Activation, PS3 System, and you're going to want to take Game and then Activate System. Now, what you may want to look at is, is that if you go back into PKGI, you will see that there is a list of games that is located there. And obviously, if you decide that maybe you want to play one of these, you would just simply select it. You could exit to your XMB, and then when you do that, that game is queued to start downloading once you reboot. So we'll just go ahead and hit another reboot here just so I can show that to you right now. Okay, so there you can see it. Uh, there's that little icon that says it's downloading something. And if we look at this, I wound up downloading a couple of different uh, games just to download them. So now you will need to go to the PlayStation content one, the one that has the little blue in order to install it. That is the difference versus installing stuff like homebrew um, packages. At this point, 1942 was installed and then I believe I downloaded 
uh, zombie tycoon, which I believe later on I found out that was like something else. I wasn't sure what that was. Uh, but you see down here, just in this example, that if you go down into the information, that they should have a login of a buyer and then a no time limit. If you don't, then that game is not going to run. Um, what we can do here is we can go into this one just to show that it's running. And we'll quit out of it. And we could try another one here if we wanted to. We'll grab this alien shooter game. Okay, and there is the alien game. If we go to information, it should show that this one is logged in. Thanks for watching today, and please subscribe, like, and drop in a comment. If you don't mind, I'd like to uh, grow this channel and uh, share a bunch of other knowledge that I have with you all. Thanks so very much. Bye-bye.